This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about Bitcoin and the Lightning Network. In yesterday's video, we talked about the two main ways to scale Bitcoin. In other words, to help it to grow bigger and serve more people. One way is you can, you can increase the transaction size. So rather than having seven $100 transactions on the base chain, you could have seven $100 million transactions. The other way I talked about was by adding a layer two or side chains to Bitcoin. Today, we're gonna to talk about a layer two solution which just means that it's something that's not taking place directly on the Bitcoin blockchain itself. It's built on top of it. This is called the Lightning Network. It's a great solution for micropayments for the proverbial buying coffee with Bitcoin. And it has three main characteristics. It's extremely fast. Settlement speed is basically just limited by your internet connection. It can be instantaneous, one second, two seconds, but very, very fast. But in contrast to the base layer itself, the Bitcoin blockchain itself, which produces blocks every 10 minutes. So Lightning Network increases the speed here. It is Its fees are negligible, less than a penny in most cases, as far as I can tell. So extremely cheap. If you're using the Bitcoin blockchain itself to buy a cup of coffee, your cup of coffee might be $3 and then the transaction fee might be $5 or something like this. So it doesn't make sense, but it certainly makes sense with the layer two solution like the Lightning Network. Super fast, super cheap, and also highly private. The payments are routed from Lightning Node to Lightning Node, and each node only knows the node before and the node after. So there's some interesting privacy benefits as well. So how does this work? I'm gonna show you the technical way that it works at a very high level, but you should keep in mind during all of this that it's just like the internet. The internet is now at a point, and it has been for many years, where you can use it without knowing about the base protocols. And there are also many services built on top of it that allow you to use uh, to use it. So this is what will eventually happen with the Lightning Channel. I'll talk about a Lightning Wallet at the end of this video. Basically, this is how it works. Two parties open up what's called the Lightning Channel. And this is basically uh, secured by a multi-sig address on the Bitcoin blockchain. So let's say Matthew adds 10 Bitcoin to this, this address on the blockchain and Mark adds 10 Bitcoin. They're now 20 Bitcoin locked up on the blockchain, on the base layer, secured by two out of two multi-sig. What this means is that both parties, both Matthew and Mark need to sign in order to move the coins. In order to do this, Matthew and Mark will both need to be running both the Bitcoin full node and a lightning node. What we will see, of course, is that there's service providers who can take care of all of this. Matthew and Mark can now send Bitcoin back and forth between themselves for essentially zero fees and instantaneous, instantaneously. Matthew might be a store. Mark might be a, a, a frequent customer at the store. Maybe Matthew is the target store and Mark is a customer who often shops there. It could be two large banks. These, these separate parties really could be anyone. So when they're done transacting back and forth, and they could do thousands or hundreds of thousands transa of transactions back and forth, and none of those transactions would hit the base blockchain of Bitcoin. But when they're done, they can close this lightning channel. And at that point, there's a final settlement, final ownership that's recorded to the Bitcoin blockchain. And so at this point, even though Matthew started with 10 Bitcoin and Mark started with 10 Bitcoin, maybe they've done commerce back and forth. And at this point, when they're done transacting and they decide to close the lightning channel, Matthew has five Bitcoin and Mark has 15 Bitcoin. And this final ownership, as I said, is recorded to the base layer, to the Bitcoin blockchain itself, because the Bitcoin blockchain, as we've been talking about for many, many months, is the most secure final settlement layer, global final settlement layer. Two transactions are needed to open up and close a, a, uh, a lightning channel, two transactions on the base layer itself, on the Bitcoin blockchain itself. You, you need to make one transaction and pay one transaction fee to open the channel and then there, another transaction to close the channel. So when fees are low, when the mempool is fairly empty, that's a good time to set up or that can be a good time to set up a lightning channel. 
Now, it's also quite safe to leave the Lightning Channel open and let your Bitcoin just continue to circulate through the Lightning Network. And in this way, if you're using a Lightning wallet, it's a little bit like a checking account. You can get paid to that checking account and you can spend from it for really large amounts of money. Maybe you'll use a savings account or a brokerage account or you'll buy a piece of real estate that would be equivalent to the Bitcoin blockchain itself. But what's important to note is that the Lightning Network can be a place where a lot of Bitcoin go to live and it can become and is becoming a circular economy. If you're going to spend a transaction fee to send your Bitcoin to someone, in other words, to spend it, you might as well, in many cases, just spend that same transaction fee, open up a, a lightning channel, and then you can leave that channel open and conduct many, many more transactions, having only paid that initial fee on the base layer. If you're finding this video helpful so far, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button, and maybe share the video with a few friends. So this gets more interesting when we think of multiple lightning channels. So in the previous example, we just had Mark, Matthew and Mark. But what if Mark and Luke have a channel and then Luke and John have a channel? What this means is that Matthew can send money to John by routing it through Mark and through Luke. And there are very smart ways of doing this. And obviously there'll be software and there is software that takes care of this routing. If Matthew wants to send money to John, these uh, routing systems will figure out the cheapest and fastest way to do it. Now, instead of using the words Matthew and Mark, what if we say that Matthew is Coinbase and Mark is PayPal and they each have their own Lightning node? This is when it gets very interesting. Maybe one of them is Target, one of them is Walmart, one of them is uh, Amazon or Whole Foods, etc. You can see how this can grow. And these Lightning nodes can take place between individuals or corporations or governments. I assume the El Salvador government will be running some lightning nodes as well. So you can see that the more channels you get, the more interesting it becomes. And here is a map of uh, the global lightning network. And we can see these channels going all across all of the major continents. Obviously, it looks like they're clustered for now in North America and Europe, but still activity taking place in Central and South America in Africa and in Asia. And this is something that's actually happening now, that's being used now. We have all these promises from Bcash and Cardano and Dogecoin and Ripple, etc. But this is something that is actually uh, being used, especially for the unbanked population in places like Central South America and Africa, as we're going to talk about. Now, in this video, I'm not going to go into what makes a Lightning Channel secure. Uh, it gets pretty technical pretty pretty quickly. I'm not sure I completely understand all the intricacies, intricacies myself, but needless to say, all of this is cryptographically secured. Uh, it's essentially a trustless or trust-minimized model. You have something called hash time lock contracts, which means that you can send money from Matthew to John, Matthew to Mark, Mark to Luke, Luke to John, and then John will broadcast a secret back to Matthew or the hash of a secret and show that he has received the money. Uh, I may go into this in some depth later, but it does use um, what's called HTLCs. Also, there's a way of force closing a lightning channel if one of the parties is doing something bad. So needless to say, you'll have to trust me at this point, I will make more videos on this, but this is, a, it's a very secure place for your Bitcoin as far as I can tell. Now, what are the, what are the applications? Applications, uh, the most famous one is Jack Mahler's Strike, uh, using this uh, mainly for remittances is the main use case right now, but you can really send money to anyone in the world. And what happens if I wanna send money, for example, to Europe, um, I'll, I'll put US dollars into this app. It'll, it'll be converted into Bitcoin. It'll be sent across the Lightning Network. And when it gets to, let's say it gets to Germany or France, it'll be converted back from Bitcoin into euros. It's a, it's a way to send money essentially for free anywhere in the world. It has a lot of applications, especially for remittances. If you're uh, originally from El Salvador and you're working in the US and you want to send money back to your extended family in El Salvador, rather than going through Western Union and paying outrageous fees, you would just use uh, an app like this and use the Lightning Network. There are also uh, lots of ideas coming for how to use the Lightning Network to basically stream 
uh, micropayments to content producers. So let's say I have a podcast and if I put it through one of these apps, maybe for every minute you listen, it streams me a few sats. A sat is much, much less than a penny at this point. So it allows these sort of micro payments. And uh, this could be very interesting on the internet rather than having to put in a credit card and subscribe to something. Basically, you watch a video, listen to a podcast, and that content creator just gets a few pennies from it. It's not a lot of money, but aggregated across all the listenership, it could definitely add up and it's a very easy way of doing this. So there's a, there was another one that was doing this besides Breeze. I couldn't find them this morning. Maybe some of you know which company that is. You can drop it in the description in the uh, comment section below. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about Bitcoin Beach or El Zante, which is in El Salvador. This is really the first hyper Bitcoin, hyper Bitcoinized location in the world where everything uh, or a lot of commerce is being used uh, is using Bitcoin. So it's really, it's become a true Bitcoin economy, a circular economy where you can get paid in Bitcoin and you can pay in Bitcoin. You can buy tacos, you can receive remittances, you can receive uh, otherwise receive tourist dollars. And this really gives the lie to the people uh, like uh, the uh, like Jackson Palmer, Dogecoin co-founder who says that uh, cryptocurrency is a right-wing technology for the rich it's ironic for him to say this because Bitcoin really is the best chance for the world's poor and for people who don't have access to banking. And we're seeing this orig uh, 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 happening already in El Zante. And we can see that it's really going to spread, uh, as, spread as well. Great article here about how Africa is getting solar powered lightning network nodes. Another thing I should mention is that when these payments are being sent over the Lightning Network, there's no energy usage associated with that. Maybe there's a tiny bit from uh, the Lightning nodes being plugged in. But when people criticize proof of work, proof of work is what secures the base layer in Bitcoin. It's for securing large amounts. You can do thousands or hundreds of thousands of transactions on the Lightning Network. It doesn't burn any extra electricity or it burns the same amount of electricity you might burn watching this video or sending an email. And so this is what a lot of critics of, of proof of work and uh, Bitcoin's consensus mechanism miss, that you can have the base layer, which is very secure. It's a little bit like banks sending gold back and forth between each other in the 19th century to settle up uh, transactions. That's the Bitcoin block chain itself, the settlement layer, the most secure decentralized global settlement layer we've ever seen. And then on top of it, you can have all this commerce, all this activity going back and forth. And it's in fact very energy, uh, it's very energy efficient. If you want to try out the Lightning Network, you can try downloading the uh, the Strike, uh, I can't remember if it's called Strike or Zap app. You can also check out, they're, they're now Lightning wallets like Phoenix. I haven't tried this one yet. I'm going to try to try it this weekend, but it does have lightning support built in and it's non-custodial, which means someone is someone else is not holding your Bitcoin. You'll still have uh, full control of it. We can see here that here's an example of how um, basically the, someone's using the wallet to pay people, to buy espressos, etc. And these are very small amounts of money. There's 100 million uh, sats in a Bitcoin. This is just 1,700 sats. So we're really talking about uh, really pennies or so. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.